the Department of Correctional Services, uh, led by the National Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Tobahale. Uh, they will be briefing us today uh, on the issues that we have asked them, that is the NCCS vacancies issues uh, and the vacancies generally. Uh, over to you, uh, Commissioner. Good morning, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. Um, uh, let me appreciate an opportunity for us to account on these uh, um, issues that are before the committee today. Our presentations will be led by the Acting Chief Deputy Commissioner for Human Resources, Mr. Mtombeni. We also have a team that will be supporting the presentation. Um, through you, Honorable Chairperson, I will request that Mr. Mtombeni um, starts to present. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Zigalala will assist with regards to the flighting of the presentation. Sorry, Chair, Honorable, Honorable Mayor Chairperson. Griffin. Um, I see um, the commissioners, um, oh, it's, it's, it's called iPad, but I'd like to see the face before we start, please. They can just show their faces before we start. Okay, yes, uh, I was going to note you at the end, uh, Honorable Newport uh, uh, and because I, uh, I, I wanted the commissioner to finish uh, before we address that issue. Uh, commissioner, can you reword your, yes, your iPad that's fine. Uh, so um, um, you say Mr. Mtomben is going to lead, uh, uh, Deputy Commissioner Mtomben is going to lead, assisted by uh, Mr. Zikalala. Over to you, Mr. Mtomben. Yes, thank you, um, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning. Uh, Chairperson and honorable members, good morning to National Commissioner. Mr. Zubadala, can you deal with your photo? Um, yeah, it's better if you close it. Uh, honorable Janji, uh, welcome. Um, I was holding the fort because uh, you had not yet arrived. Would you want to take it over from here? Uh, no, I will be in your support chair. I'll continue in your presence if you can just chair. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. No, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to Peter Minister, uh, Tili Zintaba. Morning, chair. Morning, uh, honorable member. Thank you very much. We were about to receive a presentation from Mr. Mtombeni, assisted by Mr. Zigalala. Uh, the National Commissioner has already introduced the, the two uh, people who are going to be writing the presentation. Uh, over to you, Mr. Mtombeni. Good morning once again, Chairperson. Uh, Honorable members, good morning to the Deputy Minister, National Commissioner. I am going to do the presentation as the National Commissioner has said, and I'm going to start with the presentation on the uh, status of the parole boards. Um, yes, so, uh, Chairperson, the purpose of the presentation would be to present the information on the status of the filling of the posts in the correctional supervision parole boards, the medical parole advisory boards, and the National Council for Correctional Services uh, to the portfolio committee. Uh, if I start with the boards, uh, Chairperson, the department have got 52 
parole boards nationally that have been established in terms of Section 74 of the Correctional Services Act, Act 111 of 1998, as amended. Now, the board consists of a chairperson who is a member of the community, a vice chairperson who is also a community member, and then there is a DCS representative who act as a secretary of the board, then the board consists of two community members. We also, the board co opts members of SAPS. Now, uh, the boards are distributed throughout the, 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 the country as follows. Free State, Northern Cape, these are the two provinces that for us is a region, consists of seven boards. So it, it's a one board uh, management area. We have got eight management area in that region. And then in Eastern Cape, we have got eight parole boards that are based in uh, um, Tata, Lusiki City, Sada, Amatone, East London, Credo, Kirkbrook, and St. Albans. And then in South Cape, we have got 11 boards. Now in the two big management areas, which is Johannesburg and Koshimampur, we have got two ports. That's why they are 11 in total. Then in KZN, we also have got eight uh, ports in seven management areas because we have got two in Devon management area. In Western Cape, we have got 10 uh, ports in the Popo, Pumalanga, and Northwest, we have got eight boards. So that, that is the boards that make up the two uh, boards in the country. Now, the summary, <coughs> excuse me, the summary on the feeling of the uh, Correctional Services Parole Board post are uh, displayed on slide number six uh, as follows. Free State Northern Cape. We have got five uh, positions that are filled and two are vacant. And in Eastern Cape, that is for the chairperson. And in Eastern Cape, we have got seven that is filled, one is vacant. In Houghton, we have got 10 filled, one is vacant. In KZN, we have got five filled, three are vacant. Uh, and in Western Cape, we have got um, eight, two are vacant. I'm sorry, I was reading on my on my paper and it's pointing me to the to the screen. So I also need to under to 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 just outline in advance, uh, Chairperson, that this summary is uh, displayed in the details of the regional breakdown where we explain uh, where the post is vacant, uh, the processes that are taking place in order to fill the, the, the positions. If I start with the breakdown of the regions, uh, I start with KwaZulu Natal, uh, you will see Chairperson that uh, as I have indicated, uh, what is vacant is Kokstad and Nome. And, uh, the reasons, the reasons for the post to be vacant is that uh, the, the recruitment processes, the recruit, recruitment processes are finalized, and uh, we are waiting to 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 to, to, to fill the post because of vetting. And this vetting, I must point out, Chairperson, is that we are delayed by the confirmation of a metric. Uh, those that passed metric uh, uh, earlier, uh, it's not easy, not with Umalusi. It, it takes long to finalize. That is the reason why they are, are vacant. And then that is with the Chairperson. If I proceed to the Vice Chairperson, Vice Chairperson, the Glenco is vacant. The post is registered for the upcoming uh, advert. 
Then we similarly with the community members, the post is all the posts are filled. So is the that is how we have indicated the positions of the uh, filling of po post and uh, our slides indicate chairperson, vice chairperson, and community members. It's just that I'm not going to read everything, but uh, the summary, as I said, is displayed on slide number six. If it is fine with you, chairperson, I want to proceed to the to the next, which is the pardon me, which is the. A status on medical advisor parole board post uh, on slide 36. Uh, the status on the medical advisor parole board is as follows, Chairperson. The, the medical advisor parole board is established in terms of section 1793A of Correctional Services Act and uh, its its role is to advise the minister uh, on lifers on the consideration of parole and the posts are filled uh, as indicated in slide 37 that is the chairperson vice chairperson and nine members and uh, the current term is going to expire on the 31st of may and the appointment of the new uh, board has been finalized and the term of the new board will commence on the 1st of June 2023. Then the last is the status on the position of NCC post. And NCC, their function is to uh, uh, make recommendations to the minister on lifers when he has to consider them for the parole. And uh, this is also uh, in terms of the section 83 of Correctional Services Act. Uh, the posts are filled as indicated. Uh, the one that is vacant is for the vice chairperson, uh, who is a judge, and the process has been initiated to appoint a state judge after consulting with the Chief Justice. That process is on. And uh, there is also a member of the South African Police that is vacant and a letter was sent to the National Commissioner of the South African Police Services to nominate a representative after Brigadier Nguyen retired and follow-ups are being made. Then uh, the, the, the NCC staff uh, is has a staff complement of 13 officials uh, and they are on a contract basis. And the uh, head of the Secretariat is a is a secretariat who is at the deputy director level and is seconded by the Department of Correctional Services. A need is registered by NCCS for the creation of permanent structure for the NCCS uh, uh, functioning. Now, in conclusion, I do want to state, Chairperson, that recruitment on all outstanding vacancies uh, will be finalized and the department is reviewing the appointment of the the appointment regime of the parole board we have received a number of concerns with the current contract which does not uh, cater for the basic conditions of employment act we have made some uh, uh, we have taken some steps to accommodate them while the process of reviewing is taking place. Our legal services is considering the recommendations that we have received, and we are also considering extending the current three-year contract period to five years in order to create stability to the members. Uh, I end, I submit that, Chairperson, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Zigalala. Uh, members, that is the presentation of the Department of Correctional Services. Any questions or comment or suggestions? Honorable Egelbrecht. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to know, um, with all of these vacancies in the in the parole boards, mm. are there any of these that have um, trouble in functioning or getting a quorum together in order to consider um, parole applications um, in, in all of these um, regions that we saw on the table? And then um, I would like to... Uh, support the the view of uh, extending the three-year contract to a five-year contract um, because uh, another thing is also that surely one can foresee that there will be a vacancy occurring um, except if someone resigns or someone dies um, why is it that there's so many vacancies and that we have to wait so long while there's uh, cases upcoming and posts are not filled what 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 was the hold up why wasn't these things uh, communicated or advertised in advance before a post becomes vacant thank you mr chair thank you very much honorable and trust honorable new board chosen thank you uh, Chairperson, good morning to everyone. The need for uh, the need for a permanent NCA structure, structure for the secretariat um, is that in the process, or is it just a need that was identified, or is it in the process of creating a permanent secretariat structure? And I see in the act, it doesn't say that there's a time limit. So you are saying the contract, you want to extend the contract from three to five years, which I agree should happen. But the act is silent on like the serving board and how many years they, they serve or how many terms they serve. So uh, why is there a need to extend? Extend it if there is no mention of it in the act, if I'm reading it correctly. And then, sorry, there's one thing I wrote and I can't read my own handwriting now. Oh, uh, Honorable Engelbrecht covered me. There, there are many vacancies or, or, um, or vacant positions. Um, the last in, in August. In August 2022, many of them say August 2022 was it's supposed to be finalized, but all this time it has not been. So the presentation, um, I, I well, I saw it in the presentation. Um, many of it says August 2022, but the vacancies have not been filled thus far. So I just wanted to inquire as to why. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Changchen. Uh, no, thank you, Chair. Um, let's let's thank the department for the presentation. Um, although the the presentation assists us only, Chair, in so far as the uh, feeling of post and what's vacant, what's filled, um, and maybe it was one wants to ask questions that. If they are not able to answer here, they were going to they, then they would need to assist uh, sending that in writing. Um, I am more interested, Chair, in the functionality of these boards, not in their composition. The presentation tells us everything about composition. Thank you. Fine. This is how they are composed. How are these boards functioning? It's it's because good work and problems will come out of functionality, not out of how they are composed. So it's the issue of the content and the form. So the form is, this is this how we look. This is what the presentation is telling us, Sinje, this is how we look. But we want to go beyond the look. It's, it's really about whether, even before you consider and support the extension of three years to five years, on what basis? Can we support that when we're not able to touch the issue of functionality? And for example, one would want to ask such questions as, if this is how 
they are filled because it looks like, um, for example, in the in relation to community members, it looks like community members are active in the overall, where you have about 63 members filled, only 12 or so vacant. So community members have taken this seriously. And then they will take us to the chair. Many chairs are there. In the majority of cases, chairs are in those positions. There's less vacancies than those that are filled. But from where I'm sitting, Chair, I would really want to know, um, firstly, overall, nationally, and in each of the 52. So how, how many, for say, for example, for a certain period in the previous uh, financial year, how many parolees uh, um, or how many were uh, parolees were released, uh, were recommended uh, by this board? Uh, and secondly, uh, out of those that were recommended, how many re-offended uh, in that particular area and overall in the country? Um, so it, it, it's going to, and, and also whether how many of those have been arrested because in order for us to see functionality, it's about um, this parole board, is it doing its work? It, these are the kind of things it has considered for these parolees, they have been released to the community. This is the impact they have in the community or whether it's 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 bad uh, or good. I, I'm really interested in that, Chair. But I'm also worried that uh, it looks like in the Secretariat, uh, because the Secretariat is a, um, which is an internal departmental arrangement, is not taken seriously. The Secretariat is, is largely acting basis, Chair. It's like, uh, if you have got nothing to do, go and act in the secretariat. And it's also generalized. It's headed by a deputy director. And I don't know how it will be taken, it, it gets taken serious um, in that space of, of, of DCS. So even, even that set up doesn't inspire confidence and hope from where I'm sitting. Is that by design that perhaps it's, it's done in that way? Um, so, so one chair has got those kind of uh, uh, quick, uh, immediate questions just on this. But oh, in the overall, I am indicating that we're not interested in the form necessarily. We're interested in the combination of both that form and the content in terms of the functionality of these parole boards. Um, because if there's a cry, it's about the kind of decisions they take or not take uh, and, and so on. So let me pause there, chair. No. Thank you very much, Honorable Janshi. Uh, I saw Honorable Newbold's hand was up. Uh, I'm not sure whether he still wants to come back. Um, uh, Chair, I had a question for the NCCS, but I'm realizing that we're discussing the parole board, so I think I'll hold that question. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, over to you. Uh, services. I'm not sure whether DM would want to say something now, or you just allow the national commissioner. Uh, thank you, um, Chairperson and honorable okay. members. Let me also um, recognize the presence of our Deputy Minister, Ingozi Patekile Olomisa. Um, uh, Chairperson, I, I, I will start with the, the question on the NCCS and indicate that in terms of the act, the NCCS is an advisory body to the minister on policy and also on the issues of LIFAS as the presenter uh, acting CDC from being indicated. The administration of the NCCS, because it's, a, it's, it's an advisory body to the minister, is basically in the office of the minister. The act says that what we need to do as the department is to provide administrative um, capacity. And um, that we, we have done. Yes, we have... Um, um, an acting director 
and the administrative structure. Um, in the new or proposed organizational structure of the department, we have made provision for the um, allocation of an office that is well capacitated for the NCCS. Because the question is, that we had to answer is, whether the NCCS is a structure that is um, short-term based or is a permanent structure. So the act establishes it as a permanent structure. So we have realized that in the past, the administrative capacity that was, that was provided to the NCCS did not meet the, the nature and form of the advisory body as it stands. Um, so we are in a process of uh, making it a point that we provide that capacity as it is required and um, enacted. We are just finalizing the, the organizational structure with the uh, DPSA. We have submitted, they have responded. The technical teams are working on the, the, the comments from DPSA and I, we, we are hopeful that in a matter of a few months, will have um, a, an organizational structure that is approved, and then we will provide uh, uh, the, um, the positions or the capacity as it is uh, required. The, the Honorable Chairperson, the questions that we... National that Commissioner, National Commissioner, uh, I think you are, um, as the committee, you know it very well now, um, we always want specifics. We don't want a matter of few months. Uh, we want by when will it be concluded. Uh, in the committee, we, we, we generally want specifics. Yes, Honorable Chairperson, I am limited in my response because the uh, DPSA is the one that approves structures. At the moment, we've provided the necessary capacity to the NCCS. It is functioning um, at full capacity with the administrative support that we have provided. We've linked the NCCS to a directorate in uh, the branch of incarceration and corrections that deals with the issues of parole and the uh, ensuring that uh, the sentence plans of uh, offenders are implemented. So there is support in the NCCS itself, in the office of the minister. There's also administrative support that we have in the department that clears the work before it goes to the NCCS. So for now, that is a, a measure that we've put in place. In terms of permanent capacity, as I've indicated, Chairperson, we are awaiting approval from DPSA. Uh, on the side of Treasury, we have cleared the structure because we did not create any positions outside the current budget that we have. We're just waiting for the DPSA to give us a go ahead and then we'll implement. So it is not possible for me at this moment to say by when, but uh, uh, we have passed the first hurdle, which is to submit and to get inputs. We have responded to DPSA. It's a matter of a month or two. We are uh, confident that the department will have an organizational structure that we can uh, uh, implement. So we will note this question. And when you come back for the annual reports, can you give us an update? I think that month or two would have lapsed when we come back in September. And uh, when you start with the PRR, uh, please uh, give us an update uh, uh, to how far is the structure, whether the DPSA has responded or not. Yes, honorable Supported chair, that's good enough time. Yes. Um, proceeds, National Commissioner. Yes, thank you, honorable chairperson. On the three questions that uh, uh, honorable chairperson of the subcommittee, honorable Janji, asked, uh, I want to request that we submit the information how many were released, how many re offended, and how many were. Um, arrested because this these are statistics. Uh, I would request that we submit that information. We can do it within uh, the normal uh, 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 seven days uh, uh, timeline. Functionality of the board. 
That's they, in all that shit. Uh, thank you, Honorable the, the functionality of the boards, the boards are functional in instances where we have vacancies. Um, we then rotate the boards because the boards are, are organized in the manner that we are organized. They are a mirror of how the department functions. You have boards that are specific to a management area and you have boards that are specific to a correctional facility. So where we have um, vacancies, the boards rotate. If that is not possible, what we do is that we transfer inmates to a correctional facility where the board is functional with all the information, the files, psychologists, social workers, they follow the, the, um, the inmate and it is possible then for the parole board to sit and consider the case of that specific inmate. So we do not have an inmate that would not appear before a parole board because there are vacancies. Um, and that's why as it stands, we do not have complaints of offenders uh, not getting attention or not getting a particular a date to appear before the parole board. The complaints that we have are about the outcomes of the parole board. Um, and those ones obviously are based on the work that the parole board would have done. And the complaints are basically around um, a recommendations or decisions from the parole boards to give um, offenders a further date, referring them to further rehabilitation programs or referring them to further assessment by social workers and uh, our psychologists, given the, the sentence plan. Why do we need five years? Honorable Chairperson, we, we were looking at the fact that you have members of parole boards that uh, invest um, in the work that they do. Um, and the work that they do is also um, specialized work. They also are responsible for building relations between the department and communities, promoting social, um, um, reintegration of, of offenders. And when we then assessed, also given the, the legal opinion that we received on the contract itself, um, we were advised that three years will not be an, an enough you know, uh, tenure. The other thing that we have also observed is that after that two years, when we advertise, the same members apply. So basically on average, um, when one when one went through the country to to meet uh, parole boards at a regional level, one realized that on average, parole board members that we have have been serving for ten years, and um, over the the years they have built this institutional memory and experience that uh, assists us in ensuring that when we go through considering offenders for parole. Um, we do not, um, we reduce the margin of error to an extent that we do not have a case at, at, uh, at, at, at this moment or recorded where uh, our parole board members erroneously recommended or took a decision to uh, release an offender into community corrections um, erroneously as, as, as one is indicating. I have um, answered the question on the Secretariat, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Why do we take so long? The appointments of, of parole board members are ministerial uh, appointments. Uh, also the medical parole board, those are ministerial appointments. So apart from administrative processes that we administer in the department, we then have to make recommendations to the, to the minister. Uh, the presenter acting CD symptom being indicated that we also have to take uh, the recommended uh, 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 candidates through a process of uh, of of vetting. Um, so both those processes they they prolong um, the 
the process that we we then go through in making appointments. Um, I must indicate that uh, we also have um, identified a weakness in the system where a, an, a, a position would be vacant and the regions would take time to um, advertise those positions. So um, human resources uh, a branch at head office has been given a directive to um, closely watch against those vacancies and ensure that they are um, they are advertised. Um, Honorable Chairperson, I want to believe that I've answered all the questions because the last question, which was the first question, um, was on vacancies and parole boards and whether this um, is not affecting the functioning and, that, and I have answered that question. Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I will then uh, um, uh, rely on the assessment by the by the committee as to whether the questions were answered uh, satisfactorily. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much, Commissioner Honorable Janji. It's 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 a quick one, Chair. Just a follow up, but process wise. I, I agree with the National Commissioner, hence I made a request for those answers to be in writing, that it is statistical information, uh, was wanted in that way to be detailed. I want, just want to ask him a, a further task in, as they send those uh, uh, responses in writing uh, to add uh, uh, another column in areas where in a particular parole board and overall nationally where they, they would have been, the answer would have been, we have paroled so many, these were, re they re-offended, re-arrested. To add a further column that uh, would show to us what kind of interventions they have made in relation to that and the lessons they've put so that we understand what would have been the causal issues uh, for that is it to do with uh, uh, purely uh, the, the, the stubbornness of conduct of this individual, or it has to do with a, a, a blind spot in the parole board themselves in, in allowing this person. So um, since it's going to be in writing, I think they can then afford to also uh, give us heads up on that because it would assist us, in fact, to even understand more what the challenges that they are dealing with. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Janji. Um, I think that is in order. Um, National Commissioner, um, have you met with your counterpart, uh, the, uh, the National Commissioner of Police, so that uh, the vacancy that arose as a result of retirement is filled? Um, uh, maybe the DM wants to come in. Uh, DM Olomisa. Oh, thank you very much, Chairperson. And good morning again to the honorable members. Uh, now, you, we, we are very sensitive as the ministry to any delays that occur with respect, especially to the filling of posts. Now, the, I'm reminded of this by the comment made by the National Commissioner, where he says that because these are ministerial appointments, I inquired as to whether there have been, there are submissions with respect to these appointments that are in our offices. And I've been advised that, uh, yes, they did come to us in December last year. And uh, we did our part, I made my recommendations and the minister, I'm told, gave his approval. So it can be therefore that uh, the delay uh, is caused by a delay in my office, in, in the ministry's office, because we, we did what we had to do, as I say. So the, the department must uh, check the documentation as to where exactly it lay, so that uh, appointments that were supposed to have been made have not yet been made. I just wanted to, to highlight that fact that now 
the impression could be that uh, the delay is in our office when it is not. Of course, had this been raised in our briefing session by the department, we would have cleared it up because we're very, as I say, we're very much sensitive to delays in these matters. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Chef. But I see the National Commission wants to clarify this. No, thank you very much, Deputy Minister, National Commissioner. No, th th thank you, Chairperson. I, I want to apologize to the Deputy Minister um, if my response created an impression that I am um, putting blame on the on the ministry. I was just explaining that uh, there is an extra um, uh, layer of consideration, just like the appointment of, of senior managers in in the in government in terms of the delegations. Um, so that's the process. What I emphasized in my response was that every member of the parole board, every member of the NCCS, every member of the medical parole board who is appointed needs to be vetted. And that is a process that um, is not in our hands and it causes delays. I also indicated that our own regions were taking time to advertise positions that are vacant. And now what we are doing is that we are monitoring each and every post that gets to be vacant, especially parole boards, because the process is administrative on our side. And we make it a point that it is advertised, the, the committees are set up, panel members are appointed, and then the interviews are done and uh, memos come through for approval um, by the ministry. So that's what I, I meant, Honorable Chairperson. Um, there are no delays that are caused by the ministry. And I just wanted that to be very clear. If there were, as the uh, Honorable Deputy Minister indicated, one would have alerted uh, the, the both offices and I'm definitely sure that the matter would have been attended to. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, National Commissioner. Um, uh, the issue is whether you have met with the National Commissioner of Police to deal with the vacancies that arose as a, as a result of uh, a retirement on their part. And I think uh, also it would be important that uh, you, both the ministry and yourself in particular, uh, meet with uh, state security uh, uh, to, to call upon them to try and expedite uh, this uh, vetting uh, processes uh, because they add uh, into the delays that you are experiencing. Um, so two things, one is the issue of the, uh, um, the delays caused by uh, SAPS, uh, whether you have met with the National Commissioner and what are the outcomes. And then also um, a, a request that uh, you prioritize meeting with the TG uh, State Security. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. With regards to the, the National Commissioner of, of SUBS, um, I have not yet uh, raised the issue with him. Um, in terms of how we work, I don't think that the matter actually requires a meeting. I will uh, raise it with him today, and I'm definitely sure that uh, by, by next week, Monday, we'll have a member that is appointed. Um, so that one, I'm definitely sure that it will be done. Uh, now that uh, it has been mentioned that uh, it's a matter that is delaying the appointment process. And uh, yes, I will uh, arrange a meeting with the um, um, the DG of state security to ensure that we then uh, deal with the delays with regards to the vetting of members that. Uh, 
of of candidates that have been um, um, recommended for appointment. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much. Um, I think as uh, Honorable Engelberg and supported by Honorable Nivus Tuchan have suggested that uh, we have no problem with the extension of five years, especially with the responses we have given, the amount of time it takes to settle in. And that it would be really important to focus on the issues that Honorable Janji raised because uh, uh, for us, the, the functionality and the impact, it's very important to us as public representatives. We do understand the other process issues, but the most important question that uh, should come to us or should be asked by us is on the functionality and on the impact uh, to society. Of, uh, of this thing. So it would be important that uh, another update is uh, organized where we can do both uh, the issue of the, of the uh, functionality and the impact uh, of these uh, parole boards uh, to our society. Thank you very much, DM. Any closing words, Deputy Minister? No, Chair, except to say that uh, indeed this, this is the kinds of interaction with uh, the portfolio committee are helping us also uh, in, the, in the ministry uh, because uh, some of the questions you're raising, we've also been raising them with the department. But uh, to be fair to them, uh, if you look at the presentation, it shows that some of the delays are, are, co are occasioned by the fact that we have to interact with other government departments and institutions. So they tend to delay and not take these matters uh, with the seriousness that we believe they should be taking them. Otherwise, we appreciate uh, the advices that have been made and also the call made that uh, we come back again by way of uh, giving the portfolio committee the information that is required to show that uh, you are indeed uh, uh, making uh, a progress in this regard. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. I think the other issue that I forgot is the issue of Umalus. Um, we did indicate yesterday in our in the debate um, that we we need to have a discussion as a country um, about the type of support we give to security cluster departments. Uh, um, because the support these departments uh, leaves much to be desired. Um, the impact that uh, this uh, lack of support or the slow pace of giving it, it's doing to these institutions, it's very, very serious. So I would support, I, I would uh, recommend that um, uh, DM and National Commissioner also engage with the Department of Education and find a way of expediting all the, all the um, requests for qualifications from Malusi and any other institution uh, that you would need to get, have to do the verification from. Um, so there has to be some engagement that will result in a, a particular uh, a dispensation uh, that would uh, assist your processes to move much more faster. Um, before we, thank you very much. Before we move to the next item, uh, members, as you were informed uh, earlier this week, that Ms. Daphne Shongwane has left the employ of parliament. Uh, she is going to another country. I see that we have a new interpreter. Um, I think it would be good for Honorable New uh, World to introduce the interpreter so that we, we we are familiar with her. Uh, 
Thank you, Chairperson. That is correct. My apologies. I haven't introduced uh, the interpreter. The interpreter now that is voicing for me. Her name is Caitlin. Her name is Caitlin Ne, and she is from DEFSA. Um, so just to inform everyone on the group, there is not only one interpreter that will be interpreting throughout. You will see there is another interpreter. His name is Francois. He'll be joining in later today. So he is also in DEFSA, and they have provided us an interpreter. Yes, they are young the youth way that we are bringing them in to learn and also to develop here. But thank you, Chair. No, thank you very much, uh, Kathleen, and welcome to this uh, dynamic committee, friendly committee. Uh, we hope that we will work well with you and uh, we will also welcome the other interpreter when, uh, when he or she comes. Um, so that uh, we, we are part of the family, you are known to everybody. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. No, thank you very much. Uh, can we go to the next, and I think uh, the next presentation by TCS? Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. The next presentation will also be made by, um, will also be um, delivered by Acting Chief Deputy Commissioner Mtombeni. On the screen already, the presentation is flighted and I will request through you, Honorable Chairperson, that we allow him to make the presentation. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. I'm now proceeding to present the information. Status of disciplinary matters in the Cover the summary of reported cases. I will talk, I will present about the grievances, particularly those that are outside the uh, prescribed time frame. We try to indicate the causes of uh, grievances uh, after our analysis. We, my presentation will also cover the disciplinary cases as well as suspensions. We will also share some interventions that we are busy with. Now, um, the summary of the reported cases uh, is that for the fourth quarter, the, the grievances report is 298, and uh, we final out of that 298, we finalize 171, and uh, those that are in, in progress is 127, and uh, I, I can report that this performance of the manner in which we handle grievances when we look at the third quarter it's an improvement then with regard to the disciplinary hearings a total of 873 were reported uh, of which we dealt with 553 and finalized them and those that are in progress is 319 and uh, also when we look at quarter three we are performing at a better rate. Now, with, with regard to the suspensions, we, we, we have got 149 reported, and uh, we have lifted 66, and those that are active is 83, which is costing us uh, an amount of 6 million. Now, the breakdown of the reported uh, grievances is as follows. Uh, head office uh, 10, the Popo, Pumalanga, and Northwest 28, Houghton 60, KZN 41, Free State Northern Cape 64, Eastern Cape 29, 
and Western Cape uh, 66. So we do compare regions so that we can look at uh, what could be the causes and where such uh, occurrences are prevalent. The breakdown of the pending grievances is uh, in terms of the period is also uh, indicated as follows. Uh, and uh, there is also you no, know, when we look at the manner in which we are managing uh, that, we feel that we are improving. Of concern could be the grievances pending that are uh, outside the time frame. If I look at the period seven to 12 months, we have got three in head office and four in KZN, eight in Fristed Northern Cape, three in Eastern Cape, two in Western Cape. We do have three grievances in Fristed Northern Cape that are in the period of 13 to 24 months and one in LMN. And as I said before, the causes, the, the, the prevalent causes of uh, grievances uh, is as follows. It relates to the performance uh, assessment, uh, the declined temporary incapacity leave, uh, acting allowance, appointment, shortlisting, uh, uh, incapacity leave, pay progression, incorrect salary and adjustment, overtime remuneration, victimization, and uh, the next one is the breakdown of the reported disciplinary hearings. Uh, as I said, of the 873 cases reported, uh, uh, the most was uh, in Eastern Cape, 211, uh, Free State, Northern Cape is 140, and Houghton 104. But, uh, we are managing them uh, because we are performing at 3.46%. Uh, we also have put uh, the disciplinary hearings that are longer than the prescribed time frame. I will concentrate on 30 to 24 and longer than 24 months. We have got three in head office, five in housing. These are the disciplinary hearings uh, in the period of 30 to 24 months, five in Houghton, as I said, we've got one in KZN and five in uh, Free State Northern Cape and 65 in Eastern Cape, uh, one in Western Cape. Those that are longer than, longer than 24 months are five in KZN and one each in Houghton and Free State Northern Cape. Then the Suspensions, uh, uh, with the financial implications, is also demonstrated, as I said, to the tune of uh, uh, six million. And the breakdown of these active suspensions uh, is 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 uh, that for the period of seven to twelve months. That is the suspensions that they've seen that period. Six in KZL one in Free State Lutheran Cape, one in, uh, uh, for the period of 13 to 24, is uh, three in head office and one in KZN. I must also indicate that uh, we continuously work on these matters and when we compare with the performance for the third quarter, we are satisfied that we are making progress and um, the reason, if I look at the interventions that we are busy with, we continuously train our officials, especially management on the handling of these matters. And uh, we also continuously train them on the code of conduct. And we do target women and youth as a preventative uh, uh, step to ensure that we do not uh, continue to have a number of unhappy, happy staff. And Chairperson, I also wanted to indicate that these statistics should be taken in the context that we have got a staff complement of 89,000 in the department. So when one looks at the numbers, uh, 
yes, we can do better, but that is my presentation. Chairperson, I thank you and I pause here. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Commissioner. Um, DM, do you want to say anything? No, no, not really, Chair. I think it's covered all. We just uh, entertain the questions. Okay, thank you very much, Deputy Minister. Uh, National Commissioner, are you covered? Yes, uh, Honorable Chairperson, um, I'm covered. The Deputy Minister has provided direction. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much, National Commissioner members. That is the presentation. Any comments, questions, or suggestions? Uh, I take it members have no questions or comments, Honorable Tanji. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. I do just uh, two specific ones that uh, mm. uh, I think uh, would assist me. Uh, firstly, with all of this, what would be the overall cost to the department on these uh, matters? And secondly, how has all of this in a particular region and overall nationally would have affected the meeting of set targets and the performance of the department. Those are my two questions, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Janji. Uh, over to you, National Commissioner, or anyone delegated by yourself. Mm. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. With regards to the cost, the presentation indicates that already um, we are taking a knock of approximately more than six million on the suspensions. We have appointed uh, other officials to act in those positions. Um, with regards to performance, Yes, it would have been better to have more hands on the deck. At the moment, we are operating with less than that capacity. Of course, it uh, requires of us to double our effort. Um, we could have done better if these uh, members did not involve themselves in um, activities that would lead to suspensions and disciplinary processes. The cost, um, honorable chairperson, will, will, will continue to, to rise. Um, what we are doing is to ensure that in as much as we follow the um, letter and spirit of the law with regards to disciplinary processes, where there are possibilities of us bringing back members to, to work, without interfering with the disciplinary processes. We do that. We have done that with the regional commissioner of uh, KwaZulu-Natal. He is back at work. The disciplinary processes are continuing. Other matters that we have uh, before courts are still continuing. Um, and with that, we are saving a lot of money because he's at the level of a, a deputy director general. So we're, we're doing that just to mitigate the costs and also the, the risk of having um, limitations with regards to capacity to deliver. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, um, Honorable Tranji. Uh, any way forward you want to suggest? No, thank you, Chair. Um, look, I'm th and thanks to, to the Commissioner, and uh, I would, didn't expect that he would be uh, on point to, to give specific 
uh, figure firstly on the cost issue, um, because you can see that six million, that's quite a lot of money. Um, it doesn't mean that they must stop DC matters, but it does suggest, Chair, uh, that uh, out of these DC processes, uh, and I'm sure they would need to do that if they are not doing, uh, they, they, they would need to find a way based on the lessons they are getting out of this as to how uh, this can be done better. Um, is, is it um, a culture issue in the department or and, and whether these DC matters are also uh, creating or assisting in sending particular uh, STEM messages and statement about um, so that others now begin to see that something is being done or are we talking about a this is just a tip of the iceberg of what is happening in that department and and quite clear i was clear in my mind that uh, you such such a, a number of these matters would affect um, the performance and, and really meeting of targets so i think the 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 nc has, has answered in saying what it, this has meant is that uh, Maguanisha would have doubled up uh, in terms of the work that he needed to do on the basis of this. I think that we all agree would not be sustainable because the next thing you're going to get are going to be issues of leave, uh, sickness and, 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 and burn out uh, in the process um, because they they are only meant to focus on certain areas. So it, it does, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm also at the same time, very happy chair that there is a beginning of attending to these matters. Um, and, and so I just wanted to make that follow up comment. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Janji. Um, I think let's, uh, with that way forward, Let's move to the next uh, presentation. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Can I request uh, Mr. Uh, Zigalala, the Deputy Commissioner responsible for intergovernmental relations to um, lead us into the next presentation. Mr. Zigalala. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, through your indulgence, um, please let me um, request uh, Advocate Mobu, who is an advisor in the Office of the Minister, to deal with the next presentation, as it has to do with the NCCS. Thank um, you, Commissioner. Advocate Mobu. Uh, morning, Chairperson, uh, members, uh, DM, as well as the Commissioner and Senior Managers. Uh, Mr. Mbilini, can you just assist in flagging the presentation? But uh, Chairperson, through you, I just wanted uh, to clarify something with your permission regarding this presentation that we are about to present to you. Um, you'll recall, Chairperson, is the issue of 
the structure of the NCCS. Because according to section 83, it says the minister must appoint the National Council as it was presented by Mr. Mtombeni. He presented the structure of the NCCS. And then out of that, there is section 83.2H that deals with the members of the community. You will recall, Chairperson, uh, through your indulgence, we did engage regarding this appointment because according to the act, section H, it says four or more person not in full-time service of the state appointed as representative of the public in consultation with relevant parliamentary committees. Um, Chairperson, you will recall that we are requested to submit the names to state security of the appointed uh, candidate that we identified and of which it was through their expertise on legal fraternity, religious fraternity, academic with experience in criminal justice and knowledge of community justice, criminologists, social workers, as well as psychologists. And of which the issue that was also raised, it was the issue of screening through SSA and also the geographical spread. So I don't know if I can just go through the, 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 the presentation and also the name list and also the findings from the SSA because it was also attached on the presentation that was submitted to the committee uh, chair. Yeah, you can go through that um, because it's not only us, um, uh, members of the public or who are with uh, who are watching, they need yes. to have a sense um, uh, of what uh, we are dealing with. So you can yes. Just that. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. As I've indicated, that here in the in terms of the structure of the NCCS, we are only dealing with the issue of uh, Section H that says uh, it's in consultation with relevant uh, parliamentary committee. And then uh, firstly on page- Advocate Mubo, I think it would be better uh, as we have agreed uh, that uh, uh, this be flighted uh, so that members of the public can also see uh, what is being discussed. Um, can we can, can we give you three minutes okay. so that you can deal with that? Uh, let's come back at ten forty-seven. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. Miss Mobo, who's going to flight? Oh, Mister Bilin. Can Can Fine. he announce? Can he announce <laughs> himself? Because I don't see him in this in the in the in the in the chat. Can he speak? He was here. <laughs>
Thank, thank you, Chairperson. I wanted to firstly outline uh, the processes of um, 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 considering for IPA road. It started from the CMC offices where they will analyze the report of the offender and make recommendation to parole board. And then after making recommendation to the parole board, the parole board will also sit as a board and make recommendation to NCCS if it's the issue of lifers. So in this act, we're only dealing with lifers, the offenders that are serving life sentences. But if in a case where they don't serve life sentences, it ends with the parole board. And then after NCCS, they will sit as a committee and then after sitting, and then they will also make their own recommendation to minister for either approval or disapproval for placement of parole. So I wanted just to indicate that, uh, Chairperson. As uh, slide number four from the presentation. Can you repeat the last one? The one that has to do with the minister? Uh, the minister. It's the issue of lifers, only offenders that are sentenced for life imprisonment, where it says, according to our act, is the minister that makes a determination whether he can be granted or she can be granted parole or not, based on the information at his disposal. After all the consideration, starting from CMC, from the CMC parole board, from parole board, NCCS and then from NCCS is the minister, meaning minister is the final decider when it comes to the issues of the lifers. And then uh, page one, uh, Chairperson, it's about the presentation of the appointment of the NCCS. As I've already explained that here we are dealing with a uh, section H of the uh, NCCS, which says we need to appoint in consultation with relevant parliamentary committees. Slide two. Move to slide two, Mr. Twala. Mr. Twala. Milin. Oh, can I project? For no behalf. I think it's big limited network. I will project on my side. Okay. Apologies, Chairperson. Thank you, Mrs. Galala. As slide four, we are dealing with introduction where uh, here, Chairperson, it's as you may be aware that the minister appoints the National Council in terms of section 83, and of which the main function of NCCS is to advise the minister on develop, developing policy with regard to correctional system, as well as the sen sentencing processes. I've already explained on the issue of sentencing processes where we deal with the issue of the lifers. And of which uh, it also indicates that the minister must also refer draft legislation or measure policy development regarding correctional system to the NCCS for their comment and also for their advice. And of which the NCCS is dated back from previously with uh, the old act in terms of section 59. You can move, sit there. Uh, here, Chairperson, we're also dealing with the issue of introduction where it also explains the role of the NCCS. I must also indicate, Chairperson, that the current council we have extended because we've been extending their contract and then it's now ending on the 30th of June. And of which we submit to the committee that it needs to be uh, at least uh, supported for appointment before the 30th of June. Move secret to slide two. You can move secret. Um, 
Here, Chairperson, we are also dealing with uh, the structure of the NCCS, as it was also presented by Mr. Mtombeni, that we have three judges, and of which two judges are currently uh, two judges are currently inactive, and of which they are presenting um, in terms of the act, and of which we are uh, the only outstanding. It's only one judges because according to the act, it says the minister must appoint after consultation with Chief Justice, meaning this process is ongoing. And also we have the magistrate and the uh, prosecutor from National Prosecuting Authority is there. The representative of the Department of Correctional Services is there. And then social development is also represented. Police is the one that is outstanding with a, a member that was uh, last year uh, went on pension. Two person who specialize in the field of corrections is there as well. And then what is outstanding now, Chairperson, is the members of the community, which is the one that we are dealing with now, which is uh, section H. And then for the purpose of this communication, we, only, uh, we are going to limit the appointment uh, in terms of this section 83H. You can move to this. And then here, Chairperson, we're just highlighting the issue of uh, the importance of having this uh, NCCS board and of which we are saying that uh, in our correctional uh, environment, we have a seriously consider and adopt, implement the virus strategies with the aim of uh, managing the offender behavior, such as boosting hygiene, that's what they consider health, other essential services for our offender. And also, on the issue of self-sustainability and uh, self-sufficiency uh, uh, model, and of which we are saying that our offender, they play a very big role because of the figures of our country being regularly uh, prioritized, and also that the self-sufficiency through environmental health and practices without compromising public safety and of which research and policy development are urgently needed in this area. These are some of the things that they also consider when they, uh, during their sitting for um, NCCS sitting. And then furthermore, Chairperson, is in terms of section 78 of the Correctional Services Act 111 as amended, it's also stated that um, the NCCS, they also have the responsibility of advising minister in respect of powers in relation to offender saving life sentences. In this case, Chairper said, Minister will from time to time receive um, application from court for the review of this, uh, not, for example, in a case where he did not uh, approve for parole. So they will always from time to time challenge the minister and of which NCCS will come to party to advise the minister and how to respond to such cases. And then appointment was also advertised on the Sunday Times and of which we did not succeed and of which it was also reappointed, I mean, re-advertised to at least to increase the pool of appointment. And of which now, um, Chairperson, uh, through you, we are proposing names that were selected for appointment. Move, Sitle. From the legal fraternity chairperson, uh, the first person we have Amanda Lindogu de Villagazi, age 20, uh, 37, female and admitted attorney based in Johannesburg and currently serving as a member of the NCCS. And then the second one was advocate Yvette Louis uh, Lerox, age 46, female and advocate of the High Court based in Eastern Cape. And then the first the third one was Advocate uh, Kavareni Aaron Mahumani, age 65, male advocate of the High Court based in Limpopo. I must indicate that uh, Advocate Mahumani is currently a member of the NCCS. And then the first one was uh, Maroti Aaron Mashifan, age 45, male admitted attorney based in Pretoria, and who also represent people with a disability. And then also we have Ms. Ngezeni Victoria Mboweni Puna, age 35, female admitted attorney based in Bomalanga. 
And then lastly, from the legal fraternity, we have Tsepo Nawan, age 41, male admitted, uh, based in Johannesburg. And then can you move to the next slide that deals with a uh, religious uh, fraternity? We have uh, Reverend Pohiso Franz Mogis, age 58, who is a reverend in as, uh, apostolic faith mission based in Pretoria. And then from academic with experience in criminal justice, we have Dr. Liano Rose Johnson, age 60, uh, who is a doctor of education based in Pretoria, involved in virus project and activities, working closely with the Department of Correctional Services and educational uh, program that benefit women, women offenders. She was also working with the department in the establishment of UNISA hub. She will be assisting the department with the training of professionals in the department. And we also have uh, Mr. Muzue Kolumfeget, age 68, based in Western Cape, completed master's in administration here, served as a member of NCCS from 2016 till to date. And he is involved in number of community development. And then now we move um, to the knowledge of community justice. We have the Dr. Hema uh, Hagoven, 61 of age from Kazul Natal. She obtained a PhD in criminology in 2006 from University of uh, KwaZulu Natal. She served as a member of the Department of Justice and Correctional Development Provincial Restorative Justice Subcommittee. She is a former member of KwaZulu Natal Quality Assurance Panel for Diversion Service Provider. She is a current member of the NCCS. You can move. Criminologists. Under criminologists, we have uh, Dr. Vanita Chetty, age 71, female who specializes in criminology, which, uh, which is a scarce skills in the Department of Correctional Services Environment and is based in Devon. Her experience, skill, and specialization are relevant to the work of the NCCS, and she's currently serving as a member of the NCCS. And then we have Ms. Vuyelwa Mawin. 30 years of age from Basul Natal with master's in social science, majoring in criminology, forensic studies, and doctor of philosophy candidate. She's lecturing forensic criminology, has worked with the Department of Correctional Services on risk profiling and community profiling. You can move. Under social workers, we have Darlene Van Biljon, age 48 years of age from Eastern Cape Female with masters in forensic social work with extensive experience in social work, restorative justice, victim empowerment. And Dr. Yolinda Stein, age 48 from Free State, female with a doctorate in social work and worked um, with the department for 23 years experience in social work. You can move. Next slide, Sujay. Psychologist, Mr. Velem A.A. Hanekom, 68 years of age from Western Cape, is a clinical psychologist with masters and experience in the Department of Correctional Services and private practice. And then we have Ms. Lusanda UZ Reiterman, 67 years of age, based in Gauteng, a clinical psychologist with masters and obtained uh, from University of Surrey. She is a current member of the NCCS. We can move. Chairperson, here under discussion, I wanted to, uh, to, to indicate that uh, security screening was done by the state security agency and of which we attached the copy for the screening. And a point, a point uh, the findings of the screening, Mr. Ngopo, who was also selected was also to have found to have a assault case and of which um, we had to uh, replace him by Dr. Havenga. And then the annual budget uh, for the NCCS as indicated on the presentation is controlled by the uh, 
Secretariat of the NCCS, which is employed by the department, as it was also indicated. It is for this reason that the act does not require appointment of an accountant as a member of the council. Next to the move, next slide. The council allowances, um, it's 2,698 per session per day, and they are paid from the compensation of employees budget from the department of uh, members of the council who are not in service. So here, uh, council, uh, I mean, chairperson, I have to indicate that the only, um, the only members in, within the, 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 the NCCS council that are getting compensated, it's only these ones that, that we are dealing with now from section A. But for example, like the magistrate, the judges and all, they don't get any compensation. And then it was also attached on the presentation. And then goods and services budget is also allocated for the running of the cost and of which budget allocated 2020, 2021, it was 1.86 million. Budget allocated 2021, 22, it was 1.3 million. Budget allocated 2022, 23, it was 1.142. 1 Move to Next. The NCCS meetings, they meet once a month for three days, and the three days are divided as follows. What they want to uh, what they want to do, they are dealing with LIFAS profile, and of which they deal with plus minus 150 profiles that are discussed during their city. And then day three, they are dealing with the issue of policies as one of their uh, role is to advise the minister on the issue of policies. And then the financial report was also attached and of which we can just uh, flag in and of which is just the financial uh, report that indicates their uh, spending plan in terms of the budget that is allocated. You can move to the next slide. As per the Correctional Services uh, Act 83H, we therefore recommend and open for discussion to the above mentioned names to the Portfolio Committee of Justice and Correctional Services and Select Committee on Security and Justice to consider the appointment as members of the council. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Advocate Mubo. Members, that is the presentation uh, from the department. Uh, I think we must bear in mind that uh, uh, in whatever we do, we should ensure that we meet the, the, the deadline that is, I think, the 30th of June. Um, are there any questions, comments, or suggestions? Honorable Nivo Stuchen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I just have one question that I see that most of my questions were covered in terms of the one question that I have with the budget. The budget shows 2021, 2022, 2022 to 2023, the budget shows that it's already covered all the NCCs that is included, who, the vacancies that are not there. So I just want to know in full, what is the amount for all the vacancies if they needed to be covered, the budget for that, if for all the positions? So that's the only question for now. Okay. Any further questions? Um, we'll get to move on. Thank you, Chairperson. I must indicate that, um, as I've explained, that the only budget, it covers the members that are not in full-time service of the state, and of which it's only 
covered for this one that are appointed in consultation with parliamentary committees. Like for example, it's a 2.6 per day that they're, they're getting and of which they only meet for three days and of which we time sip and then that's how. And also I must also indicate that the budget, it, it also includes the issue of transportation as well as accommodation during their city. So like for example, other members that are not um, appointed in terms of section H, they are not getting any compensation from, meaning they are not uh, counted from this budget, but they are only covered in terms of transportation as well as accommodation during the city. Thank you. I think I've covered the question. Thank you very much, Honorable Chanchi. No, Chair, thanks, Chair. Just mm -hmm. raising my hand in support of the presentation, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. The, the presentation has been supported. Any other comments? The presentation has been agreed to. Um, I think it will be taken to the House. Um, Honorable Dushan, Dushan also supports it. Thank you very much. Uh, it will be taken to the House for the House decisions. Thank you very much. Um, um, and special thanks to the department. I think you have done a lot of work. Um, if you look at the presentation, you have tried to cover um, almost all the provinces. I think people are appropriately qualified. Um, I think a lot of good work has gone into this um, NCCS. Um, we will try and ensure that um, uh, we speak to programming, uh, to program it as early as uh, next week, if possible so that we are trying to meet that deadline to assist to, to assist you to meet the deadline of the third year. Uh, thank you very much, uh, National Commissioner, Deputy Minister, Advocate Mugu, and the team. Uh, is there any other item on the agenda? No chance was what done, Chair. Um, um, just a few announcements. Um, for next week on Friday, we are meeting with the Department of Public Works, Correctional Services and Justice uh, to deal with the issues relating to oversight. So we, the meeting will be physical in Cape Town. Um, on the issue of the public hearings, um, uh, on uh, the cannabis bill, we are proposing that the hearings, because they are going to be focusing on one specific item that uh, because uh, that, that, that we need to to be dealing with. I think something to do with commercialization. Um, all other areas we have. Uh, this will be the third public hearings on the same bill. Um, but we know that um, it will be difficult to force, in fact, to make people to, for, to focus. Um, um, if you look at the presentations that have come through, uh, people are still um, raising issues on the whole bill. Uh, we will try and manage that, um, but um, we have tried to, we are going to be focusing uh, on this issue, and then we will come back to now to 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 approve or to deliberate on the bill as a whole, and uh, before it goes to the national assembly. So we are proposing that all, as much as we we are experiencing some levels of load shedding, that still we proceed with the virtual um, public hearings on the cannabis bill, uh, because in terms of the decision that we are great to is that uh, we are going to be approaching uh, each bill for public hearings on a case by case. 
in looking at the issues uh, of the bill, the issues of public interest and all of those things. So our proposal just for logistical purposes and knowing also the, the constituency that would want to raise issues that um, we continue with the, with the public hearings uh, eventually because most of them, it is easy for them to uh, to 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 connect virtually than to organize flights to come to Cape Town and all of those things. So that is the proposal, members. Any objections? I agree, uh, Chairperson, with the decision. Thank you very much. We agree. Uh, members, we will meet on Tuesday. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend and thank you to the department. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister, for availing yourself and leading the department, the National Commissioner, and everybody. Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. Thank, thank you, Chair. 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 Mm -hmm.